morning, everyone. This is the is it September September meeting of the Public Disclosure Commission. Um, we have a little some issues with our uh, audio and visual, but uh, we want to get the meeting started on time. So we may have the cameras may switch up at, at some point, but for now you just have to look at the whole room. Um, First, let me have the commissioners introduce themselves before we get to the first agenda item. I'm Alan Hume, the vice chair. Fred Jarrett from Mercer Island. Jay Leach. Thank you. First thing I'd like to do. Welcome. Thank you for having me today. Um, Bill Kunzel here. Um, all of my comments are regarding uh, case 26406. Could you pull your mic a little closer to you? We're not hearing you nearly as well. Can you hear me better? Can you hear me now? A little better, okay. Joe Kunzler here regarding case 26406, which is your 11 o'clock enforcement. Um, I want to quote Nikki Freed about malicious people like the respondent in the voices of a few people. Quote, we may all disagree on policies, but if we as leaders don't denounce neo-Nazis and white supremacists in our state and our country, what are we doing here? End quote. Indeed, what are we doing here if case 136406 results in a negative fine going uncollected while the respondent spews more hate in his campaigns where he doesn't disclose a single thing. Not a single donation has been disclosed. Not a single form has been turned in food campaigns over, over the past two plus years. There have been four complaints about the respondent, about the respondent two of them are. So those are facts I want this commission to please consider. And, and, and I really hope this time that, that we have a referral to the Attorney General's Office for prosecution. Because at, at some point, this commission is going to have to realize either you stand for enforcing the rule of law or you stand for the end of the PDC because voluntary compliance isn't working here. I want to quote Santa Marin being, it's a significant act in a way that you leave behind more good than bad, end quote. Bad would be ending the PDC as a credible institution. I don't want this. I do not. A PDC that cannot seek criminal and civil prosecution of a neo-Nazi who persists in hiding his campaign finances, yet is on the top two November ballot and campaigns during public comment periods with the, is a PDC that's giving a license to dark money and worse. I hope the PDC will rule today. There is the, the most honorable option left to save the reputation of a vital state institution, absolutely vital to our democracy. And that is to refer the respondent to the Attorney General's office today, or if you absolutely insist, if you, if, if you feel one last ultimatum is necessary, okay, fine, but this time, follow through. Thank you. Because what are we doing here? I want you to ask yourself that, however, cross please. Thank you for your public service. Thank you, Mr. Kunstler. In addition to Mr. Kunstler's testimony, we have received three public comments in writing uh, from Mr. Kunstler, Connor Edwards, and Glenn Morgan that was received late last night. Folks have had a chance to read that. We are back in session. The next item on the agenda is an enforcement hearing for Avram, also known as Alec, Alex Zimmerman, PDC case number 136406. I'm going to turn the matter over to Susie Jaws Klein from the Attorney General's office, who will be presenting this matter. Madam Chair, uh, good morning. For the record, Susie Jaws Klein. Assistant Attorney General representing PDC staff. Uh, today's staff alleges that the respondent, Avram or Alex Zimmerman, uh, a candidate for public office in 2022 and 2023, violated RCW 4217A 235 and 240, 
by failing to file the required contribution or C3 reports, as well as the required expenditure or C4 reports for both of those election years as required by law. Uh, today's staff will present evidence uh, establishing as follows. Uh, first, that staff received a complaint uh, with those allegations on April 28, 2023. Uh, and based on that complaint, staff conducted an investigation. And the evidence will show that on or about May 17, 2022, Mr. Zimmerman filed a declaration of candidacy for state senator uh, with the Secretary of State's office and uh, appeared on the primary election ballot of that year, but did not advance the general election. Uh, the evidence will also show that the following year, um, on May 18, 2023, Mr. Zimmerman filed an additional declaration of candidacy for Bellevue City Council uh, with the Secretary of State's office, uh, and in addition to that, made three public declarations of his candidacy uh, for that position and maintains a campaign website openly identifying himself as a candidate for that position. Um, in that in that election, the respondent did advance to the general uh, and is currently a 2023 general election candidate. So by publicly declaring candidacy in both 2022 and 2023, Mr. Zimmerman was required to begin filing weekly C3 reports starting on or about June 1st, 2022 and 2023, respectively. Um, he was required to continue filing C3 reports each Monday for deposits made during the previous seven days. Uh, in addition to that, Mr. Zimmerman was required to file monthly C4 reports uh, in June 2022 and 2023, covering the prior months for those election years. Uh, and was also required to file the 21 and seven day C4 reports for both of those election cycles. But to date, uh, Mr. Zimmerman has not filed any of these required reports. Now, importantly, the evidence will show that the commission, the commission previously found that the respondent did not file a C1 candidate registration form for either 2022 or 2023. So never affirmatively opted into uh, mini reporting. Now, had he done so, perhaps he would not have been required to file C3 and C4 reports, but because he did not elect to file as a mini reporter, the respondent was in fact required to file these reports as, as provided by law. And finally, the evidence will show and Mr. Zimmerman has a history of repeated PDC violations, and despite having three orders entered against him, has never filed the required forms nor paid any of the monetary penalties assessed against him. Um, additionally, Mr. Zimmerman has never responded to any of staff's various contacts or requests for information, either in this case or during any of his prior cases. Uh, thus, the preponderance of the evidence supports our position that Mr. Zimmerman violated 235 and 240 uh, when he ran as a candidate for public office while failing to file the required C3 and C4 reports in 2022 and 2023. And at the end of this hearing, staff will ask that the commission issue an order assessing a penalty against Mr. Zimmerman for his continued uh, violations of PDC laws. And we will also ask that he be instructed to file all required forms forms for the 2023 election cycle, both um, past missing forms and any future forms that he might be required to file. Thank you. Um, and to start, we have, um, I believe, 13 exhibits that have been provided to you and we just would like to formally offer into the record. Exhibits. Uh, um, exhibit one through 13. Nancy? Yeah. Yes. Um, is Mr. Zimmerman in the in the room? We've uh, yeah. checked just for the record to make sure that everyone knows he's not there to object. Okay, that's a good point. I asked before the meeting started, but is Mr. Zimmerman here, either in person or on the phone? Hearing that he is not, I will admit the exhibits one through thirteen. Thank you. Um, we'll just be calling one witness today, um, Mr. Eric Ajina. Are you in first? Are we... You swear that the testimony that you will be giving today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right. Um, can you please state your full name and then spell your last name for the record? Sure. Eric, last name is Ajina. That's A G I N A. Uh, can you please describe uh, your role at the PDC? So I'm a, I'm a, a compliance um, 
officer. So what I do is uh, I review and uh, um, uh, in, investigate all the um, complaints that we receive from the public alleging um, violation of the campaign. And are you familiar with Alex Zimmerman, the respondent in this case? I am. And are you aware of a complaint that was filed against Mr. Zimmerman um, in 2023? Yes. If you could please take a look at Exhibit 5. Um, is this a, a true and correct copy of the complaint received by PDC staff? Yes. Uh, can you please describe the allegations contained in this complaint against Mr. Zimmerman, the ones that are specifically relevant to today's proceeding? Sure. So the complaint um, alleged the violations of uh, um, RCW 42, 17, 8, 235, and 240 uh, by failing to file uh, the required uh, contributions and uh, expenditure reports in uh, uh, 2022 and 2023 election years. And, and based on this complaint, did you um, initiate a formal investigation? I did. Uh, and that did that investigation result in charges being filed against Mr. Zimmerman? Yes. And did you draft a report of investigation to discuss your findings? Yes. Sir. And would that be, if you could take a look at Exhibit 13, could you confirm that's your report of investigation? Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk a bit about um, what your investigation revealed. Um, if you could look at page one of Exhibit 13 um, and refer to finding 1.1. 1 .1. Okay. Just take a second to review that. Okay. Uh, can you describe to the commission how you came to the conclusion that Mr. Zimmerman was a candidate for public office in 2022? Sure. So, um, in the course of uh, my uh, investigation, I, um, I reviewed um, uh, the documents and um, I also uh, looked at uh, some of the things that you know, we normally look at to make sure that um, um, a candidate is indeed a, a candidate. And uh, um, I looked at the, um, uh, the Secretary of State's website and I, um, I found out that uh, uh, Mr. Zimmerman was a, a declared candidate. Um, it looks like uh, he um, declared with the um, uh, Secretary of State's uh, um, office on May 17th of 2022. Um, he did appear uh, for the uh, primary only. He did not advance to the general election. And just to kind of confirm that, if you could take a look at Exhibit 1. Okay. Um, do you recognize this exhibit? Yes. Can you describe what this exhibit um, shows us? So this is a, a screenshot of the uh, Secretary of, of uh, State's uh, website showing uh, uh, the date and time that uh, uh, Mr. Zimmerman or the respondent um, declared their candidacy. Um, I want to ask you a couple of questions about kind of just general reporting requirements uh, with the PDC. Are, are you familiar with what it means to file under the mini reporting option versus a full reporting option? Yes. Can you describe the difference to the commission? So, um, to file as a media a reporter, um, uh, the requirements are that uh, um, you are agreeing to not accept more than five hundred dollars from any one source, and that you're also not going to um, expand more than five thousand dollars. That was before April first. Then after that, uh, that threshold was raised to seven thousand dollars. Right. Uh, yeah. So. Um, if a candidate were to file as a mini reporter, are they required to file C3 and C4 reports? No. Um, how do candidates affirmatively opt to file under the mini reporting option with the PDC? Well, you have to file a candidate on registration with us and choose or pick, uh, you know, filing as a, a mini file. And did Mr. Zimmerman ever file a candidate registration with the PDC in 2022? No. Um, given that he did not file a candidate registration form for that year, did he affirmatively opt into mini reporting? Did he, sorry, given that Mr. Zimmerman didn't file the, the C1 or candidate registration form, uh, was he able to take advantage of the mini reporting option? Um, and because he was not able to take advantage of mini reporting, what was, what was the reporting option? 
as a full as a full reporting. And our full our candidates who opt into full reporting are they required to file C three and C four reports? Yes. Um, so given what we've established, uh, Mr. Zimmerman's declaration of candidacy with the Secretary of State in 2022, um, and also given the fact that he didn't fill out a C1 and didn't opt into many reporting, uh, did that trigger any reporting requirements with the PDC? Yes. Uh, what reports was Mr. Zimmerman required to file in 2022? So a contribution um, reports or a, C, um, a C3 or um, expenditure uh, reports, which is uh, C4. Uh, can you ex can you describe when he, when he was required to file C3 reports? So um, uh, you know for both the C3 and C4 reports, um, until five months before the uh, elections, um, he was required to file monthly C3 and C4 reports. And since he uh, declared publicly at the beginning of the year, at least for 2023, he was supposed to file monthly C3. And C falls all the way to uh, cover May, and then um, he was also required to file the 21 and seven days uh, C four. Okay. Uh, um, if you could take a look at Exhibit Seven. Do you recognize uh, this exhibit? Yes. What does this exhibit show? So um, the exhibit itself is a, a screenshot of the candidate uh, information page. This is uh, um, publicly um, uh, available. Uh, and uh, um, it shows that uh, Mr. Zimmerman did not file any uh, reports. And for what year was this? This, this was for 2022. And did Mr. Zimmerman advance past the primary in 2022? No. <clears throat> All right. I'd like you to return to Exhibit 13, sorry, which is your report of investigation, uh, and take a moment to review finding 1.4. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to confirm it was not. Um, okay, so. Uh, you, you, you've reviewed 1.4. 1. 1. 1. Yes. Can you describe to the commission how you were able to conclude that Mr. Zimmerman became a candidate in 2023? Yes. So um, again, as a um, part of the um, investigative uh, process, you know, we look at the Secretary of State's uh, website to confirm that uh, uh, they indeed took the uh, step, the actual step, and formally um, registered or rather filed a. Um, uh, candidacy with him, and uh, he did on May 18th of 2023. And if you could refer to Exhibit 2. Okay. Is this sort of like Exhibit 1? Is this a, a screenshot from the Secretary of State's um, office showing that he filed for candidacy in 2023? Sorry, please. Sorry. Um, okay. In addition to Mr. Zimmerman's declaration of candidacy that we see in Exhibit 2, um, did he make any additional public declarations in 2023 regarding his intent to run for office? Yes, he did. Um, at the beginning of the year, um, he attended uh, um, on three separate occasions. Um, he attended uh, uh, the King County Council meetings. I think one was for Sound Transit. The other one was for Metropolitan. Um, yeah, I think I have it here. And then, so, um, but it was three um, different um, King County Council meetings, and, and, and in all three, he publicly declared that he was a, a candidate for 2023. Now, did Mr. Zimmerman file his C1 candidate registration form in 2023? No. So, given that he did not file the C1 form, was he able to take advantage of the mini reporting option in 2023? No. Um, so given that, again, his, his declaration for candidacy filed with the Secretary of State, as well as his multiple other public declarations of candidacy, uh, and also given the fact that he did not affirmatively opt into many reporting in 2023, uh, did that trigger any reporting requirements with the PDC? Yes. And again, what reports was he required to file in 2023? C3 and C4. Uh, and I guess when was he required to file 
again, uh, so that will be uh, five months uh, for the general election, so monthly, and then also um, uh, the 21 and seven days uh, before. <clears throat> and if you could take a look at Exhibit 8 um, and explain what this what this exhibit shows. Okay, so, so this is another screenshot of a, uh, a candidate uh, information page. This is for Mr. Zimmerman for 2023. It's a, um, a PDC website where you would go and look to see if um, a candidate has filed their, um, their um, uh, reports. And uh, in this case, for 2023, he did not file any. Um, did Mr. Zimmerman advance the general election in 2023? Yes. Now, upon receiving the complaint that we discussed, which is Exhibit 5, did you reach out to Mr. Zimmerman requesting response to the allegations? I did. Uh, if you could refer to Exhibit 6. Um, do you, uh, can you, do you recognize this exhibit? Yes. Can you uh, describe what this exhibit is? Yes, so um, this is the email that um, I sent to the respondent on uh, uh, May 9th, um, um, uh, and uh, um, I attached a, a copy of the complaint. Um, did Mr. Zimmerman ever respond to your email? No. Um, has Mr. Zimmerman ever responded to any of your or any of other any of, of the other staff's requests for information related to this case? No. Um, are you aware of whether Mr. Zimmerman has a history of non-compliance with the PDC? Yes. Okay. We're going to go over some of those um, prior violations. Can you now turn to Exhibit 10 and just take a moment to review that exhibit? Do you recognize this exhibit? Yes. Um, what is it? So this is an order um, uh, imposing a, a fine, um, and uh, this is for um, an F1 that the respondent was supposed to file on or uh, about June uh, 4th of 2021, and he didn't file. And uh, um, respondent was found in a violation of uh, um, RCW 4217A 700 for failure to file an F1 report and assess the $250 uh, in civil penalty. Thank you. Uh, can you uh, turn to the next exhibit, Exhibit 11? And, and just take a moment to review that. Um, can you again just describe what this exhibit shows? Yes. So um, this is another order uh, imposing fine. This is for a uh, failure to file um, a C1 and an F1 report um, that was uh, required by June 3rd of 2022. Um, respondent was found in violation of RCW 4217205. Um, and 700 for failure to file F1 and C1 reports. Um, and um, he was assessed a civil penalty of $1,000 uh, with 500 of that suspended. Um, and then finally, if you could take a look at Exhibit 12. That. Um, Again, if you could just describe what this exhibit shows. Okay. So uh, this is another order, um, and uh, this is for um, uh, the respondent was found in a violation of uh, um, again uh, RCW 4217, 205, and 700 for failure to file C1 and F1 reports. So this one for the 2023 election year, so this year. And uh, um, he was assessed a civil penalty of five thousand dollars with three thousand dollars suspended. Uh, that order will be put into. So, has Mr. Zimmerman ever paid any of the civil penalties you've just told us about, or filed any of the missing forms related to any of the enforcement actions discussed here today? No. Um, has Mr. Zimmerman ever responded to or participated uh, participated in a PDC complaint? 
investigation for enforcement action, either this current one or any of the prior ones? You, I don't have any further questions. The commissioners have any questions? If we have any questions. Hey. I will, I will conclude. Just before you make your closing statement, I just want to make sure that Mr. Zimmerman has not joined us. No, he has not. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you all for your attention here today. Uh, today's staff has proved by preponderance of the evidence that Mr. Zimmerman did violate 235 and 240 uh, when he ran as a candidate for public office in 2022 and 2023 uh, and failed to file the required C3 and C4 expenditure and contribution reports. Um, RCW 4217A 235 and 240 require political candidates under the full reporting option, which um, should be considered a default reporting option if they do not um, opt to file as a mini reporter. Um, these candidates are required to file timely, uh, accurate reports of contributions and expenditures until five months before the general election, monthly C3 and C4 reports are required when contributions or expenditures exceed $200 or um, beginning in April 2023, $750. Um, additionally, C4 reports are required 21 and 7 days before each election in which the candidate makes expenditures and in the month following the election. Uh, contributions are reported weekly during the same time period uh, and must be disclosed on Monday for contributions deposited during the previous 7 days. Now, during today's hearing, um, we have established that Mr. Zimmerman, who again was a publicly declared candidate for office in 2022 and 2023, never filed a C3 or C4 reports. And while these reports are not required for filers who affirmatively opt into the mini reporting option on their C1 candidate registration form, Mr. Zimmerman has waived his opportunity to file as a mini reporter because he did not or may have or in fact refused to file C1 forms in 2022 and 2023, uh, despite being ordered to by this commission um, as, as uh, discussed. Uh, during his, as you can see, from his um, prior enforcement history. Um, if a candidate does not affirmatively opt into many reporting, PDC staff presumes the candidate has selected full reporting and so is required to file detailed disclosure forms. Uh, here, since Mr. Zimmerman did not file a C1 registration in 2022 or 2023, uh, he did not affirmatively select many reporting as required by WAC 390-16105. And in past election cycles, Mr. Zimmerman has filed under both mini and full reporting options. That is, um, that is a matter of public record. So there is no reason for staff to assume that he meant to file as a mini reporter in 2022 or 2023. Now, similarly, due, due to Mr. Zimmerman's repeated refusal to respond to staff's inquiries, staff cannot know whether Mr. Zimmerman's contributions and expenditures met the thresholds established by 235 and 240. However, an absence of information directly caused by Mr. Zimmerman's refusal to file any documents does not mean that staff can or should assume he has no contributions or expenditures to report. Again, Mr. Zimmerman has never responded to any inquiries and so has never asserted that his contributions and expenditures are under the limit pres limits prescribed by 235 and 240. Thus, PDC staff may assume that Mr. Zimmerman has received contributions and made expenditures uh, but has not reported these financial transactions to the PDC as required by law. Uh, in sum, our preponderance of the evidence supports our position that Mr. Zimmerman violated 235 and 240. Um, and under the statute, he was required to begin filing weekly C3 reports on or about June 1st, 2022 and 2023, respectively. Uh, but he, he was required to continue filing those reports each Monday for deposits made during the previous seven days. It was also required to file monthly C4 reports in June 2022 and 2023 during the prior month of those election years, as well as the 21 and 7 day C4 reports for both election cycles. And as has been established, Mr. Zimmerman has not filed a single report with the PDC in 2022 or 2023. In terms of penalty, this is Mr. Zimmerman's first violation for failure to file his C3 and C4 reports. 
meaning that under the penalty schedule established by WAC 390-37182, Mr. Zimmerman should be penalized uh, between around zero to $1,500 per election cycle. So for both 2022 and 2023, for a total civil penalty of up to $3,000. Uh, however, given the multiple aggravating circumstances in this case, the commission may wish to exercise discretion and assess a higher penalty. Uh, there are virtually no mitigating factors other than the fact that he is not a less sophisticated candidate. Uh, and there are, in fact, several aggravating factors. Uh, first, um, while this might be Mr. Zimmerman's first violation of 235 and 240, cumulatively, this would be Mr. Zimmerman's fourth violation of the PDC laws since 2021. Uh, moreover, Mr. Zimmerman has not filed any of the missing C1 or F1 forms he was required to file from his prior cases. Uh, he has also not paid any of the prior civil penalties assessed against him, which at this point total of $6,250. Um, it's also an aggravating factor that his repeated violations of PDC laws are seemingly intentional and they seem to be ongoing. Uh, and he has made no attempt to come into compliance. Uh, finally, it's an aggravating factor that Mr. Zimmerman is displaying bad faith by repeatedly ignoring staff's attempts at outreach, um, including his failure to participate in this proceeding as well as the three prior proceedings before this commission. And for those reasons, the commission may wish to assess a higher penalty here. Additionally, the commission may wish to suspend a portion of the penalty, provided that Mr. Zimmerman files the missing reports and remains in compliance with all of the reporting requirements for the remainder of the 2023 election cycle. Uh, to conclude, staff respectfully request that the commission find that Mr. Zimmerman violated 235 and 240. Uh, we ask that you assess a combined penalty of up to $3,000, again, with a portion of that penalty suspended if the respondent complies with the commission's prior orders and remains in compliance during the remainder of this election year. I want to thank you again for your time and attention here today. Well, a quick question for you, and that is, if we wanted to go to ten thousand dollars or more, isn't that a situation where we have to uh, ask the AG to take the case? More than well, I think I believe you are authorized to um, assess the penalty up to ten thousand dollars. I don't know if the amount of penalty matters in terms of a decision okay. as i look through the record i see zero reason to believe that there's going to be any voluntary compliance by this respondent to any order that we might make and so we get a chance to wait 30 days and see that nothing had happened and then we would come back to us and we would play uh, patty cake again uh, which is a zero interest in and um I, i'd rather just kick this case to the attorney general's office if possible. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. And Alan, this is John. Hi there. Yes. Um, it's up to $10,000 per violation. So you need to determine how many violations occurred and then you can go up to 10,000 for each. Um, I would distinguish sending it to the attorney general's office from simply filing the order and asking staff to um, proceed with uh, collections like you've done on other um, cases. Those are right. two different things. Right. Um, so you, you can certainly move to collect and move forward on this. Uh, typically going to the attorney general's office uh, is under 4217A 755 and requires typically some additional authority that their office can pursue um, or that the penalty amounts that you're allowed to assess are, are too low for what you consider the violations to justify and then you could go there so um, that's discretionary on the part of the uh, commission well i guess i was kind of just sending a message too i think we'll probably end up with a, a fine and with an instruction to the staff to say you don't need to bring it back to us at the end of 30 days uh, take it you know see uh, the attorney general to enforce it. So um, what we've done in some other- Similar to what we've done in the past. I was just kind of sending a little message that I wouldn't even give that courtesy if I- <laughs> So I'm assuming the $6,250 of fines already imposed means that all of the 
potentially suspended portions of those fines have been. Yeah, they've been reinstated because he has not paid. Okay, thank you. And those are at collections now, right? No. Um, it should be the Wednesday for me. Not necessarily the most recent. Not the most recent, probably. Not the most recent one. So not the five thousand dollar, but but that's the amount that's owed. That's the amount yeah. that's owed. So five. Out who the check needs to get written to. Right. Does anybody feel the need to go into private session, or is somebody real, real ready and willing to make a motion on this? I have one question. Um, do you have some evidence that he spent something on these campaigns? Uh, I saw the screenshots. Um, we're presuming he spent money. We are presuming he spent money because he had the opportunity to, for a few reasons. First, he does have the website that he maintains. So he does have a campaign website. So we have to spend something on that. Um, and that's included in the exhibits. Right. Um, and um, additionally, he, he's had the opportunity to um, address the allegations and refute them. And he instead has chosen to ignore them. And so the AC staff feels that it does not it does not need to assume he has spent no money based on his failure to um, to respond to our requests for information. He, has he paid the necessary filing fees for both of the elections that were referenced in 2022 and 2023? I assume you have to pay the filing fee before you get on the ballot. Yes, he did. He didn't try to have it waived on the basis that he lacked the resources. No, actually, I, um, I was able to talk uh, with the King County um, Elections Office at least for the 2023, I know that uh, um, he paid 287 and 28 cents. So yeah, he did pay that in, in cash. Yeah, we raised any funds or not, we know that he was under legal obligation to make a filing that he didn't pay. So we have, we have, by my count, six violations, three failures, for yes, each prior um, to election, the, yeah, um, which are a combination of failure to file C ones and F ones, and then well, this one is separate, isn't it? We've okay. already we're oh yeah, he's already we've already found that he How failed to file. But we've got the C one, the C two, and the C or C C three and C four, right? To, the, to, yeah, the today is, is is about his failure to file C three and C four in twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three. That's C one, but that's not any information obviously, for the complaint. We, we can't do more than what we charged him with. Though. Yes, you've already found that he failed so to file the C1. Two failures. Okay. Arguably six, there's a 21 day filing, a seven day filing and a five month filing for each of the forms. So that's three. Let's, look, two, let's look what we charged two, him with. Right? How about if we go into session for a, a brief discussion? John, can you join us? I'll bring my laptop. Certainly. All right, we'll be back in. Decided to executive session. Yeah. And John. All right, we're back uh, in enforcement matter of Avram Zimmerman, PDC case number 136406. I believe uh, we have some further questions of Ms. Giles Klein, so I'm going to turn it over to Judge Leach. Counsel, I have a few questions. First, I want to ask you some questions about C3 forms and what triggered. I understand it. Uh, Mr. Zimmerman uh, paid a filing fee of $267.28 for one of the offices for which he sought to be elected. So I believe in 2022, the filing fee was $568. And then threshold uh, that year was $200. But that's with regard to filing a C4. I believe Eric is that correct. Would would he also be required to file a C three to indicate the source of the filing fee? Not necessarily. And would the same be true for the filing fee for the other office for which he sought to be elected? So for for each of the two offices, he. Uh, spend enough money that he was required to file a C4. Yes, uh, yes, in 2022, again, we, we know that he spent the money on the filing fee in May. And then additionally, 
there were the 21 and seven day reports um, that he was required to file in 2022. In 2023, um, he was required to file C4s in May, June, July, and August based on when he declared his candidacy. However, uh, with regard to the 21 and seven days, those are actually not due until October. Um, but we, we would suggest that perhaps uh, an order uh, requiring that he file those um, 21 and seven day C4 reports. As I understand, he would only be required to file those if he actually spent some money during those periods of time. Is that correct? Those are expenditures. Expenditures. Yeah. Um, on the expenditures, if he doesn't spend any money after the filing fee, are any more C4s required? Yes, yeah, C4 for the 21 and a uh, seven each, days. Each of, for each of the two election cycles, um, one of them he, he didn't get through the primary, so he wouldn't have the 21 and seven day requirements, would he? All right. Yeah. If you'd like to sign, uh, swear in, give her myself. Well, I don't want to weigh in if we shouldn't, but the. Well, I think this is important given what evidence we have, so maybe we should swear right. in one of you. Let's reopen the record and swear in both Peter Lavalley and Kim Bradford, Executive Director and Deputy Director. I guess it's good morning. So the testimony you brought to give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Let's start with Peter. Uh, th thank you. We ask questions. In please do. Uh, would you please first state your name? Peter Fry Lavalley. And what is your position? I am the executive director of the Public Disclosure Commission in Washington. Okay. And do you have expertise in the requirements of the public disclosure reporting requirements in the yeah. state of Washington? Yes, I do. And uh, what triggers a candidate's obligation to file a C4? Uh, there is a 21 day and seven day C4 do and those are due regardless of activity so if you are a candidate in an election you owe a 21 day report when that time comes for it to be due 21 days before the election and a seven day report regardless of activity is that true for both the primary and the general election yes if you are a candidate in either of those you owe those reports what triggers the uh, initial c4 reporting requirement uh, during the period before the 21 day and seven day are required? Uh, any other C4s other than those two are due when activity reaches a threshold and that threshold has changed between those two election years. In the 2022 election, that threshold was $200. Uh, there was reference made to the filing fee of over 500. So that would have been met in certainly in one month for an additional C4 in 2022. So, so the, just to restate the obvious, the payment of a filing fee in excess of the threshold would trigger a C4 reporting requirement. Is that correct? That's correct. And that's in addition to the seven day and 21 day reports. That's correct. Because the calendar reflects those were paid in periods that weren't covered by those two reports. What triggers the requirement to file a C3? That requires a bank deposit uh, or contributions that, that need to be deposited into a bank account. Would that also include a loan from the candidate to the campaign? It would not if the candidate gave an in-kind contribution to themselves and by paying it directly as a filing fee, they would, they would not have a C3 filing obligation. They don't have a bank account. Are they required to have a bank account? They're required to have a bank account of record, which could include this is where I would bank if I had a need for a bank. Uh, but if they no, no money ever passes through, uh, they don't have to actually have the account open. But if they receive any cash contributions or uh, check contributions, they would be required to have a, a bank account to process those. How would they record the fact that it was an in-kind contribution for a um, for a um, uh, filing fee? That would be recorded. Both the receipt of it and the expenditure of it would be recorded on C4. Have any other questions for you? And I don't have any questions for Ms. Bradford. 
Okay. Questions for Ms. Giles Klein? <laughs> In the 2023 cycle, the amount, the thresholds have gone up. Yes, thank you, thank you for asking. So the, the amount went up to the threshold that would require a C4 filing, other than the 21 and seven day reports, is now $750, and the filing fee in question here was in the nature of $250, so it did not reach that threshold for this election cycle. Thank you for the opportunity to clarify something. Move that we close the record. Record, to the extent I'm in charge, I'll close the record. <laughs> All right. I'd like to move that we find that there were violations in both election cycles of the requirements for filing a C4, both the uh, C4 triggered by the expenditure for the filing fee and each of the additional C4s required 21 days and seven days before the election, uh, which I think are a total of six violations. That we impose a fine of $10,000 per violation that we suspend $2,500 of each violation upon the conditions that Mr. Zimmerman file all C3, C4s required uh, for the two election cycles. In addition, he file all documents required by prior orders of the PDC and that he pay all fines previously imposed by the PDC, and that all of these actions occur within 30 days of the date of the issuance of our order. Second. We have a motion and a second. I have a clarifying question. In the 2023 election cycle, I thought I heard somebody say that the 21-day report and the seven-day report are not yet due. Is that correct? That is correct. Is that true for the primary? I, I thought I understood you had to file it for the primary. That, that is correct. So for the primary, they were, were due and came and went. So we, we have. Okay. No. All right. We, we have. I'm sorry, I stand corrected. He was not on the primary ballot because there was not a primary. There were only two candidates. All right. Then, then I'm going to uh, modify my motion, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, to find four violations. Uh, the three violations for the uh, election cycle, uh, the first election cycle, 22. 22, and one violation for the 23 election cycle, since apparently there was no uh, primary contest because there were only two candidates. So he would not have had to file a seven or 21 day C4 for the 23 primary. So to, to clarify, so that's ten thousand dollars per violation. So yes, for four violations. Yeah, the rest of the, the dollar amounts, the amounts suspended, and the conditions would be the same. But just to clarify, so the, the fourth violation for this year, I think maybe you're you're premising that on the filing fee, which did not enough to not meet the threshold this year. Down to three. Sorry. Okay, let's back this hey, up. Let How back this up. Well, let's start. withdraw the motion. Start over. I'll withdraw my motion. Start over. Good idea. I move that we find that there were three violations in the 22 calendar year election cycle for failure to file C4s. The first for the failure to file one, reporting the filing fee. The second for failure to file a 21-day report. The third, the failure to find file the seven day report that we impose a fine of $10,000 for each of these violations that we suspend 2,500 upon the conditions that all outstanding C3 and C4 forms required for the 22 election cycle be filed. Let's see, we will get to within 21, okay. That all previous forms ordered to be filed by prior decisions of the PDC filed, and that all prior fines 
imposed to be paid in full within 30 days of the issuance of the order in this case. And I further move that we find that we have a failure of proof on the 2023 violations because we don't have any evidence and are solely asked to presume that certain monies were either received or expended. A second. All right. I think we have a clarified motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? Uh, um, yes, but with the understanding that when this doesn't get complied with within 30 days, I will be eager to make the motion to refer to the Attorney General. Thank you. That is presumed. We have, we have a sense of the Commission on that, and I think uh, <laughs> act accordingly. Uh, and Mr. Meter plan. will um, work with staff to prepare the necessary orders. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries four to zero. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Everybody from the staff who helped us through the details on this. If you need it. Thank you for your We wanted to make sure us, it, we, it was very important. 